Millions of people worldwide suffer with social anxiety disorder, which makes them extremely fearful and anxious in social situations. However, what precisely is it? We'll go over 10 essential facts regarding social anxiety disorder. In this video to help you better understand this sometimes misdiagnosed illness. Stay tuned until the very end, as I'll be sharing with you a unique quiz to assist you identify whether or not you may be experiencing social anxiety. Now let's get going. The first important thing to understand is that shyness and social anxiety disorder are not the same. Although shyness is a personality trait that can make people uncomfortable in social settings, shy people typically don't feel as terrified or anxious as those who suffer from social anxiety disorder. In and of itself, shyness is not unhealthy. On the other hand, social anxiety disorder is a real psychiatric illness that seriously impairs a person's daily functioning and causes them great emotional suffering. When someone is in a social environment where they could be the target of scrutiny or judgment from others, we observe extreme fear or anxiety. They frequently worry that other people would perceive them as stupid, dull, or even insane. One of their main worries is being rejected by peers, and they also fear embarrassment or humiliation. As a result of their avoidance habits, people with social anxiety disorder frequently battle with perfectionism and self-critical thinking, which can all lead to missed chances in life. As a result, it may hinder someone from advancing in their career by, for instance, requiring them to interact with new people or give public speeches. Romantic relationships may also be hampered by it because people are frequently too shy to take risks. The second fact is that children frequently experience the onset of social anxiety disorder. 75% of individuals with an onset between the ages of 8 and 15 had an average age of onset in their teens. It is therefore quite uncommon for adults to have this condition, with an estimated 7% of Americans thought to be affected. I want you to be aware of the third fact, which is that social anxiety disorder comes in two different forms. The first subtype is called performance only, and it is defined by extreme anxiety and panic when performing in front of an audience. Giving a speech, acting in a play, or practicing an instrument in front of people are a few examples. Not limited to settings involving performances, the other variety, known as the generalized subtype, is characterized by excessive fear and anxiety in most social situations. We frequently observe difficulties of this kind when it comes to socializing, ordering food at restaurants, and meeting new people. The fourth fact is that social anxiety disorder can be screened for with the mini SPN. The mini SPN, also known as the mini social phobia inventory, is a self assessment tool consisting of three measures that have a sensitivity and specificity of approximately 90% for identifying social anxiety disorder. Thus, quite decent. I would like to discuss this with you in more detail now, in case you are unsure if you might be suffering from social anxiety disorder. In order to facilitate your next visit with a physician for additional assessment, I have also developed a PDF version of this quiz for you to complete. The link is in the description below, in case you happen to get a high score on it. Now for fact number 5. Autism spectrum disorder and social anxiety disorder are not the same. Despite the possibility of shared qualities and attributes, they are two different circumstances. It is evident that gaining social skills is challenging for people with autism. They have trouble recognizing social signs, maintaining eye contact, and having back and forth talks, among other things. Individuals with social anxiety disorder exhibit a distinct fear of social situations. Therefore, it is a fear-based issue rather than a lack of social skills issue. Although they possess adequate communication abilities and are capable of forming social relationships, their extreme anxiety or fear in social circumstances can occasionally be mistaken for autism. Moving on, let's discuss fact number six. Social anxiety disorder frequently co-occurs with other mental health conditions. It's predicted that roughly 40% of individuals will fit the criteria for a mood disorder and roughly 50% will fit the criteria for another anxiety illness. Since people frequently turn to drugs or alcohol to cope with their anxiety, substance use disorders are another important factor to watch out for. According to statistics, 27% of persons with social anxiety disorder are dependent on nicotine. 5% have another drug use disorder, and 13% have an alcohol use issue. The seventh important fact to be aware of is that because symptoms of social anxiety disorder can be difficult to identify, there is sometimes a lag between the beginning of symptoms and the start of treatment. They can go unnoticed by others, or be misinterpreted as shyness or introversion. As we've already discussed, 
Social anxiety results in extreme dread and avoidance of social settings, which includes seeking treatment, so it can be challenging to convince people to get help. Fact number eight, cognitive behavioral therapy and medication are usually used as first-line treatments for social anxiety disorder. The two most commonly used drugs are SNRI venlafaxine and SSRS. It's crucial to remember that despite the fact that SSRIs are frequently used to treat social anxiety disorder, there is no proof that one SSRI is superior than another. Furthermore, evidence indicates that while treatment may have longer-lasting effects than medicine in terms of symptom reduction, the former may do so more quickly. For this reason, the best and most efficient course of treatment for social anxiety disorder may involve a mix of cognitive behavioral therapy and medication. The duration of time it takes for medicine to begin treating social anxiety disorder is the ninth important fact to be aware of. Medication is usually dosed similarly to depression drugs, but it's crucial to understand that the medication may take longer at work. Studies have indicated that a quarter of patients who do not react to treatment after two months might respond after three months. This implies that it's critical to monitor the effectiveness of your drug over a longer period of time than the customary six to eight weeks. I want you to be aware of fact number 10, which is how to handle social anxiety disorder in the event that initial therapies don't work. If venlafaxine, CBT, or SSRIs are ineffective, there are more sophisticated therapeutic choices. If this occurs, generally speaking, three possibilities are taken into account. The first drug is an MAOI called phenylzine. Four small randomized controlled trials suggest that it may have a more potent effect than SSRIs. Pregabalin and gabapentin, which are related drugs, are among the other medications undergoing promising trials. Remember to be mindful of the sensitivity of the topic and create a positive and inclusive environment. If you have any specific questions or if there's anything specific you'd like advice on regarding your video or channel, feel free to ask. If you found this video helpful or if you resonate with the experience it's shared, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel for more content on mental health and personal development. If you're interested in more content related to mental health and self-improvement, our journey to confidence and well-being is a continuous adventure, and I'm here to support you every step of the way. Remember, you're not alone, and there's strength in seeking support. Reach out to friends, family, or a mental health professional if you need someone to talk to.